everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to another episode from QTPTutorial.net. I'm so thankful to have you guys here today. I am going to do what's called Function Fridays, where every Friday I am going to spend 15 minutes designing one useful function for everyone to use through the rest of their automation careers. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's function going to be called pass keyboard keys. Okay. So this function is going to utilize the W script dot shell object. And we're going to pass some keys to a keyboard. Now let's go ahead and design it. And then I'll explain to you guys some possible usages of it. Let me open up QTP. Got it up right here. And let's go ahead and start creating it. I'm going to write sub and I'm going to give the function name. Okay. And I want to give it two parameters, which is Okay, so we're going to pass number of times you want to pass some key and then the key that you want to pass to the keyboard. Let me create the object. So here we created an object that's going to allow us to do some very cool things. So uh, you guys will get to see some methods when I launch IntelliSense. Let me set that equal to zero and create a do while loop. Don't worry if you're confused, I'll explain everything. So let's get my shell and let's check out some of its methods. So this allows us to have access to some of Microsoft's methods. Okay. And one of them is send keys. This allows us to pass some kind of a key to a keyboard. So for example, if I wanted to type in hello, I can type in hello and so on and so forth. And once we finish this function, I'll show you guys some examples of this. Okay. And what are we going to press? We're going to press this key. Okay then we always want to wait for one second because QTP moves way too fast for the system. So let me tell you guys that. And then we need to increment. Okay. Finish the loop here and then let's go ahead and clean up. Very important to clean up memory space and we're going to set this equal to nothing. Release the object. Okay. And so here is our function very quick and easy. And now I'll explain it to you guys and you will love what you can use it for. Let me do just one more thing and declare some variables. Very important guys. A lot of people don't do this at all, but trust me, it's the basic requirement of a good automation engineer to declare some variables. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what we can use this function for. So let me open up Internet Explorer and show it to you guys right here. So for example, we all know that stuff in here can be recognized, but what if you wanted to navigate these settings right here? Do you guys think you would be able to recognize them with QTP? I highly doubt it. And so in order to navigate these kinds of settings or in Firefox or Chrome or any kind of Windows desktop kind of application, it's QTP will not recognize it. So you're going to need to navigate it with the keyboard. So for example, if I start pushing the tab key, watch what's going on in the browser. Do you guys see that how it's moving through things? Now let me go back. Like that. Do you guys see that home key highlighted here? This was highlighted, right? 
and now I can move along it using the right arrow key. Look, I couldn't do this using QTP because it's not going to recognize these objects. Now, if I wanted to change some settings and tools, I can push the down key and, you know, I can pop up blocker. I can go ahead and turn it on if I want. Toolbars, I can go ahead and mess with this. So you can see how you can go ahead and customize your settings on your browser using the keyboard. In fact, you can pretty much do anything on the computer using keyboard. And that's why this method is so effective and can be so useful because it helps in instances where QTP can't recognize something. And that something is any object. And you can always navigate some object with the keyboard just using tab keys, up, down keys, enter keys, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and use this function so you guys can see a quick, cool feature of it. So let me grab this, paste it here. Okay, one thing I want to do, this is not relevant to the function, guys, but I just want it outside of the function just for the purposes of showing you guys what this can do. Run, and then I want to pass this string to it. This is going to go ahead and open Notepad for me. Okay, and like I said, QTP moves way too fast for the system, so you gotta make sure after each of these statements you wait one, okay? So now after we wait one, if you wanna open Notepad, here, let's pass one, and then here, let's pass like that, okay? What do I want to do next? Next, I want to press Enter. So, we just need to pass the Enter key to it, as such. And this is the cool part about our function, guys. It automatically waits after every single time that we pass a key, okay? So that's the beauty in that we don't have to do this after each statement. If we wanted to do the, this in QTP, we could, but then we would have to write one statement, then wait, another statement, then wait, and so on and so forth. Very repetitive. That's the beauty of the function, guys. So now we're going to press Enter. Then we're going to type something else, such as, okay, press another Enter. And then we will put one more message. Okay, let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Gonna push run. Get my dialog box. Push OK. In fact, let me do one, one thing because I'm actually split up on two screens. So I'm pretty sure that when I open Notepad, it is not going to open on the right screen. So I want to point you guys to the application once it opens so you guys can see what's going on. So you'll only miss the opening. Don't worry. Yeah, see, as I said, it opened up on my other screen. But it's no big deal because now I'll continue running the script and everything will be okay. Let me do just one more thing. And we want to activate Notepad. This is to bring the screen back in focus. We need this guy. Let me comment this. Okay, let's run it now. It will bring the application in focus, which is Notepad, and then you guys will see how it types some messages. Hello world, now it pushed enter. Now type that, now it's gonna push enter and happy function Fridays. How awesome is that guys, right? And you can use this for anything. So for example, some things that you may use it for was what I showed you where you can go into Internet Explorer and you can modify the settings here, anything you like. You can go into your menu and start modifying anything in here, whether you wanna change computer settings, so on and so forth, okay? Also, what you may use it for is to copy and paste. 
So for example, let's say that you had your application that ran a test. If you wanted to copy and paste this and then send it over in an email to your manager or to your development team or so on and so forth, you can go ahead and do that. You can use this for any point where QTP cannot recognize something. It's a way around. It's a, called a workaround. Okay? So that's the advantage. It's very helpful. And one word of caution that I want to give you guys is to be careful because sometimes things change, right? So for example, if I'm tabbing through this application, right? Um, let me go back to tabs, one, two, here. And someone decided to change their uh, layout. For example, if I, you know, move, remove one of these and I wanted to access it. Now the number of tabs that you press is going to vary. So just a word of caution to be careful because things may change in the layout. And then if you push four tabs and you want to get here, you may get over here instead or over here, depending on what happened. And that may mess it up. But most of the time, it's pretty reliable. And you guys, as you begin to use it, you will realize the beauty of this. And anytime you're stuck and you can't recognize some QTP object, go ahead and try using your keyboard and see what happens. Okay? Let me see and just explain the function real quick to you guys. So here we created an object of wscript.shell which allows us to access Microsoft commands such as using the keyboard, opening applications, and so on. And right here, we just have a loop that's going to run. So for example, if I want to push type this one time, I can. If I want to type this five times to push like five tabs, all I have to do is change this to five. And now this is going to run through this loop five times and is going to pass this into here. And this value goes into here. And then it's going to increment the counter and do it again until the, this value is the same or greater than this value. Okay? And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys understand this. I am going to post this on my website at qtptutorial.net. I wanted to thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you guys love this idea of my Function Fridays. And if you have any comments or concerns, please tell me how you feel. I'm here for you all. I want to help you. And so I want to know your input. I'm very interested, whether good or bad. I want to improve because I want to help everybody. Again, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next Friday for the next function. Take care.